Welcome to our Eden Home Resort channel. The original diet. Is it a helping hand for the COVID-19 crisis with side effects from the vaccinations, the shedding phenomenon? Who and what can protect us in this crisis? I believe our Creator offers us a helping hand. We read in Exodus 15, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And with this thought, I invite you to bow your head with me as I say a prayer to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name because you are our helper and the great physician who is on our side, even in this crisis. And as we want to study more of your principles, we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit to help us comprehend it and put it into practice. Thank you so much for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A review in the British Journal of Nutrition suggests that people with optimum levels of micronutrients may be more resilient to COVID-19. I found a document that talks about a recommendation for detoxification after the corona um, vaccination and for protecting against the shedding phenomenon and there they recommend a diet that's basically I believe like the original diet it reads there um, a diet that neither promotes inflammation nor activates the immune system that is sugar animal proteins such as meat fish eggs or dairy products processed foods GMOs um, gluten and refined fats should be avoided all together if possible. So what are processed foods? Processed foods are cooked foods, for example. They cause a digestive lycocytosis um, because when you cook uh, food, the proteins are denatured and the body will react against it uh, through an elevation of the white blood cell count. So the body has to fight against that nutrition. And GMOs, genetically modified foods, they are also not uh, beneficial for, for us. Well, when we look at these different food groups in the acid uh, base pyramid uh, and on the acidic side, we find disease and on the alkaline side, we find health, then we realize and that the sugars, the oils, the fats, the animal products and the products that are rich in, in uh, protein like the legumes which can only be eaten cooked, uh, the grains and the potatoes, they are more on the, uh, or bringing us more to the acidic side and promoting disease. While the plant-based uh, foods like the, fru the fruits and vegetables um, are on the alkaline side. So basically we are looking at a raw food diet that's vegan and fruit-based. The description of the original diet we find in Genesis 1. Verse 29, it's what's, what was given for man. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And verse 30, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So what is the definition of fruits and vegetables? Botanically, a fruit is a seed-bearing structure that develops from the ovary of a flowering plant, while vegetables are all other plant parts, such as roots, leaves and stems. Another place where we read about the original diet is Revelation 22.2, where it talks about the tree of life uh, in the new 
paradise and heaven where we are hoping to go. The tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So it sounds like Adam and Eve also received uh, the leaves of the tree of life because they were for the healing, for the cleansing of their bodies. And so it seems to me that ripe fruits and leafy greens are part or are the original diet. So we are looking at a fruit-based vegan raw food diet. This diet is full of phytochemicals, which some people consider to be God's pharmacy. And one of the groups is, for example, polyphenols. And research shows that polyphenols can activate the immune system to fight infection and diseases. Polyphenols also promote the growth of good bacteria like Acamansia mucinifila in the intestine and limit harmful bacteria. This effect supports good digestion, but also a healthy balance of bacteria is essential for a strong immune system function, like with uh, anti-cancer properties, lowering the risk of diabetes and improving heart health. And we have to remember 70% of the immune system sits in our gut, so it's very important to have uh, these healthy bacteria and there are foods that can promote this bacteria pomegranate currant grapes and also flaxseed well it shows to me that yeah the original diet must be our solution because we read from the wise man Solomon he wrote in Ecclesiastes 3 I know that whatsoever God doeth it shall be forever nothing can be put to it and nothing can be taken from it and God doeth it that man should fear before him another recommendation I found in this uh, protocol was fasting um, fasting helps to boost autophagy and that's the natural process of removing abnormal cells and damaged protein. And intermittent fasting for at least 14 hours or more even better uh, would be one choice. And intermittent fasting would mean you, for example, stop at uh, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon with your last meal and then have your first meal maybe around eight o'clock in the morning um, and have nothing in between because that helps your body in this process of autophagy. Another form of fasting would be water fasting and we read um, from Ellen White, there are some who would be benefited more by abstinence from food for a day or two every week than by any amount of treatment or medical advice. To fast one day a week would be of incalculable benefit to the people. When the Bible talks about fasting, it uh, talks about dry fasting, basically, which means no eating, no drinking. It is certainly the most powerful way to boost the process of autophagy, but I pro would not recommend it to people who have been uh, treated with this experimental vaccine uh, for COVID, as those people seem to have more problems with blood clotting and tend to have are prone to heart attacks and strokes and other diseases. It I also would not recommend it for old people, for pregnant people and for the very young children. But in general we can say, if people cannot at first enjoy plain food, they should fast until they can. That fast will prove to them of greater benefit than medicine. For the abused stomach will find that rest which it has long needed, and real hunger can be satisfied with a plain diet. That's from Councils of Health. Well, breaking the fast. The people at Ramadan do it with a glass of water and, and a date, certainly a very nutritious food. Um, I'm more prone to use uh, lemon juice in the water or 
or slices of organic lemons as it alkalinizes the body more rapidly. Ripe fruits and leafy greens, fresh, sweet and tasty, they are useful because they will supply our body with the phytochemicals that will increase the res resistance to COVID-19 and the associated problems with it. And that's what I like to mention now, the phytochemicals that are especially needed uh, for increasing or strengthening the immune system against COVID and associated problems. Um, and I like to highlight especially the fruit sources and the greens, uh, sometimes other plant-based sources for these uh, phytochemicals or, and minerals. Um, there's, for example, high-dose vitamin C. Um, for the treatment, they use very high doses uh, that might need to be supplemented then. But to strengthen the immune system, uh, these sources might be good. And vitamin C is our most important antioxidant, which protects our biomolecules, such, such as our DNA and our cell membranes from oxidation, and can even reverse this oxidation by donating the missing electrons to them. In addition, it is also able to direct, directly render viruses, bacteria and toxins harmless, even toxins. So for the people that believe that graphene oxide is uh, a reason for these symptoms, uh, they can also do their body good with this. And the fruit-based sources for vitamin C on top is acerola and rosehip, guava, and then red paprika, currant, kiwi, and later on come the, the berries and the citrus fruits and even banana is there. Um, for the greens, we have as sources nettle, parsley, wild garlic, sorrel, bustle sprouts, and kale, um, and some other cabbage sources. Magnesium is involved in about 80% of all metabolic functions in our energy production and in the production of proteins and our genetic material. In addition, vitamin C and magnesium act synergistically. It reinforces each other's effect when, when it comes to reducing increased intercellular oxidative stress and killing viruses or bacteria. And good sources are dates, for example, like we have shown before, papaya, banana, the different berries, citrus fruits, even avocados, mangoes, Pineapple have uh, plenty of it. Um, from the green sources, or we have in the seeds, we have higher sources, like the pumpkin seed, linseed, sweet almonds, which is actually the only nut that uh, reacts alkaline in the body, walnut, then Swiss chard, spinach, kohlrabi, stinging nettle, and several others we see there on the list. Well, vitamin D, we get it through sunshine. It inhibits the conversion of healthy tissues into diseased tissue. It uh, strengthens the immune system. It uh, prevents chronic diseases and autoimmune diseases. So sunshine is one of the essential things and it helps our, our liver and kidney to activate that vitamin. There are some foods that also contain actually vitamin D and that's the avocado and some mushrooms of which the champignon uh, can be eaten raw even with the other ones I'm not familiar with. Vitamin K, it contributes to normal blood clotting and vitamin K2 supports the positive effects of vitamin D3 by activating proteins such as osteocalcin and thus making them usable in the first place. Thus, vitamin K contributes to the maintenance of normal bones. But for us, the important part is the blood clotting. And vitamin K we find in fruit sources like in rosehip and kiwi, avocado, grapes, cucumbers, red bell peppers, zucchini, tomatoes, 
and uh, yeah, apples and oranges. In the greens, we find it even higher. Kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, lettuce, cauliflower. I always thought that red beet was a good source of it. I put it all the way at the bottom, what you find in the beet. But in the leaves, you find 2,000 times as much. And with that, I like to look at the red beet leaves a little bit. And I found a very interesting statement about it. Their, the leaves of the red beet are much richer in protein, minerals and vitamins than their beet or tuber counterparts. So it would be far too bad to throw away the greens. Beet leaves, for example, contain eight times as much calcium, three times as much iron and magnesium, six times as much vitamin C, and nearly 200 times as much vitamin A, and 2,000 times as much vitamin K as the beet. So if you have it in the yard, you might just want to use the leaves and let the, the beet itself continue to grow and produce more leaves. Glutathione, probably not very well known, but it is the body's most important antioxidant and detoxifying agent. Foods that increase glutathione levels can help the body eliminate heavy metals and chemicals and other toxic substances. And we know that more than 150 agents are in a to in the new vaccines. Um, and with that, there are certainly things in there that we need to have cleansing from. Glutathione protects against radiation and is important for the immune system. It is able to regenerate vitamin C and E. Glutathione protects and builds up the intestinal mucosa and strengthens liver metabolism. And then on the left side again, the Fruit-based sources like avocado, cantaloupe, tomato, grapefruits, orange, zucchini, um, strawberry, watermelon, papaya, red bell pepper, and so on. Uh, and on the right side, the more the greeny th green things and vegetable plant-based things, um, asparagus as high as or higher than avocado even. That's why I took it in there broccoli, parsley, spinach, okra, and even mushrooms have a little bit in it, like the champignon. Well, we read about the combination of quercetin and zinc being more, very important for um, people who have been exposed to COVID or that toxin or the vaccine. And uh, I read just one of the statements. If you want to read the other important functions, you should stop the slide maybe. But it says there, since the combination of quercetin and zinc prevents the reproduction of coronavirus, regular intake is extremely important. Also for vaccinated people, because they seem to be the breeding ground for new variants. Quercetin has shown to have inhibitory effects against the virus that's supposed to be responsible for COVID-19. And irrespective of the current research results, other positive properties are attributed to quercetin. For example, it is said to stimulate blood circulation and have an antidepressant effect. The natural substance can also be useful antivirally, for example, against herpes virus type 1. Uh, it can also help regulate the blood pressure, strengthen the immune system and positively influence cholesterol levels. The fruit sources are the different types of berries, especially apples, cherries, um, grapes and tomatoes. And for the, in the other category, I listed the capers on top, which is very high in quercetin, but it's a flower and not a fruit. And for the fruit, I could not find um, the data um, and it's not commercially available anyhow because you it will rapidly go bad um, fresh dill is very important red onions have more so than the yellow onions chives kale broccoli and green beans are also sources for it Zinc, it's a trace element and it's stored only in small amounts in our body and that's why it's 
important to include it regularly in our diet. It promotes uh, growth, wound healing, blood sugar regulation and the immune defense. It supports antioxidant process processes. Zinc helps to bind free radicals, reactive oxygen compounds that can damage cells and genetic material. They are formed in the course of normal metabolic processes, but also, for example, by UV radiation and nicotine. And so with that, we should make sure we get it on a regular basis. And we find it in figs, dried or raw, uh, in the passion fruit, avocado, uh, apricots, dates, raspberries, currants, strawberries, and in bananas. There are other plant sources, like in some of the seeds we find it, like pumpkin, sunflower, linseed, and we find it in peas, walnuts, and almonds. And then in the greens, like the dandelion leaves, parsley leaves, spinach, garlic, uh, Brussels sprouts, and chives and broccoli. And I start chives and broccoli because there we find also the quercetin and the, the synergy of these two is important, like I mentioned before. Omega-3 fatty acids, we know they're important for our thinking, for our concentration and our memory, but they also have an importance in regards to COVID and the vaccinations because of their cardiovascular effects. They lower blood pressure, they promote blood flow, and they also inhibit inflammatory processes in the body. And we have fruit sources again, which are strawberries, avocado, zucchini, mango, bell pepper, apple, cucumber, pineapple and banana, even tomatoes. And we have other plant-based based sources, uh, very high, the flaxseed, chia, walnut. Um, they are also in grains very, very high, but they are, they are the, we find them in a bad relationship to the omega-6 fatty acids, which makes them more negative for us. And then the green things like uh, spirulina, chives, arugula, um, certain kinds of lettuce, cauliflower and broccoli. Yeah, so the original diet is full of the things that we really need to be healthy. And in the plan of salvation, we see also that there's a relation to the food. The original diet was given at creation, but with sin, man received also the nutrients that the animals received, and they all were plant eaters at that time. And after the flood, uh, we read in Genesis 9 verse 3 that man was also allowed to eat uh, animals, the, the clean animals. But what happened with the flood? After the flood, the lifespan of man reduced drastically. And we see that in 10 generations before and 10 generations after what, what happened. And then we come to the Exodus. On the way to Canaan, God wanted to give them manna, but they rebelled and because they wanted meat. But throughout the course of time, we know of people that cherished a fruit-based diet, like John the Baptist, who lived mostly on carob and on honey, we know. And in yeah, 1867, God tried again to bring his people back to, yeah, to the Canaan, and he wanted to modify their diet, and he recommended a vegetarian diet. And in 1902, she warns of meat eating, um, saying that it endangers the physical and mental and spiritual health. And many who are now only half converted on the question of meat eating will go from God's people to walk no more with them. And so they won't be entering the new Canaan that we are expecting. Well, and then the same year she says, let the diet reform be progressive. Let the people be taught how to prepare food without the use of milk or butter. 
Tell them that the time will soon come when there will be no safety in using eggs, milk, cream or butter because disease in animals is increasing in proportion to the increase of wickedness of men. In the progressiveness, she also shows that the diet of animals is vegetables and grain and that God provided fruit in its natural state for our first parents. And she says in uh, Testimonies, Volume 7, that the food which God gave Adam in his sinless state is the best for man's use as he seeks to regain that sinless state. As I look at the crisis that we are in, also health-related, I believe that Christ will come back very soon. And with that, the first part of the statement becomes very interesting. It says there, let them teach the people to preserve the health and increase the strength by avoiding the large amount of cooking that has filled the world with chronic invalids. And that's when she says that the food which God gave Adam in his sinless state is the best for man's use as he seeks to regain that sinless state. So it would be well for us to do less cooking, she says, and to eat more fruit in its natural state. Well, God has told us we should look at the statues when we read Exodus 15, 26. One statue, I think, brings it home, and that's written in Leviticus 19, 19. Ye shall keep my statues. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Why not? Because it causes hybridization. And should we mix our genes with other genes through a vaccine? That's a question we have to answer to ourselves. And we read why the statues were given. In the Reverend Herald it says, Christ gave to Moses religious precepts which were to govern the everyday life. These statues were explicitly given to guard the Ten Commandments. They were not shadowy types to pass away with the death of Christ. Only the sacrifices were shadowy types that passed away with the death of Christ. And then it says, they were to be binding upon men in every age as long as time should last. So let's look at the statues. There's a prohibition against using animal fat and blood, against alcohol, against eating unclean things, and against the hybridization, which I mentioned already. And then the statues include feasts, sabbatical years, jubilee years, and the tithing. At the time of Nehemiah, he said, We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Are we in the same situation? Maybe God wants some cleansing to be happening. He cleansed the temple when he was on earth twice. And what is the temple now? We read in 1 Corinthians 6.19, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? And when we read Malachi 3, yeah, it says that God will suddenly come to his temple. Yeah, maybe he will come to us suddenly with a health problem also. And what is this for? Maybe to refine us, like the refiner's fire we read about, like the fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. God wants us to be purified. How can he do it? He wants us to move back, I believe, to the original. And we read this also when from yeah, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1. Shall those who are looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God 
and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, be behind the religionists of the day, who have no faith in the soon appearing of our Savior, the peculiar people whom he is purifying unto himself, to be translated to heaven without seeing death, should not be behind others in good works. In their efforts to cleanse themselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, they should be as far ahead of any other class of people on the earth as their profession is more exalted than that of others. There are plenty of vegans in the world and plenty of fruitarians. Where are we? That is the question. Let us look at the sanctuary. Outside is the unclean and the fermented. And it might not just include the things we eat, but also the things we look at that influence us. It might make us unclean. And then if we move forward, going into the courtyard, we find yeah, there are clean meat, we find clean water, animal products and grain products that are being used there. If we move on towards the holy place, we just find the bread and the olive oil there. So we see here a plant-based refined vegan diet. If you go on into the most holy place, the most holy place is decorated with fruits, especially with grapes. Um, there is a rod of Aaron with almonds and greens on it and manna as a reminder of what they were supposed to eat on the travel uh, to the promised land. And then, of course, when Christ enters into the most holy place, he has on his garment pomegranates, um, one of the, the fruit probably that has the most on antioxidants in it. The things we see in the most holy place are also the things that we see or that Ellen White saw in vision on the long silver table when the pearly gates of the New Jerusalem will be opened, full of fruits, almonds, uh, fruits of the tree of life. And all this was next to the river of life. And so with that, that's a step to be expected that the 144,000 will do before they are translated. They will be also feeding on manna. Manna will be on their table too. So altogether we see a progressiveness of the health message. Like she said, let the diet reform be progressive. And at the end we should be feeding on clean things. Our mind should also nurture the word of God. And we should be cleansing ourselves with clean water. And that's important internally because it aids the unimpaired blood flow. But also externally, it is uh, a means of cleansing, of strengthening the immune system. Fresh air is also one of the important steps. And exercise, especially in the sunshine. It will be very helpful with the vitamin D uh, level and the strengthening of the, of the immune system. Rest is an important factor with reduction of our screen time. And avoiding, of course, everything that makes our body more acidic, like alcohol, tobacco, caffeine. Caffeine promotes stress, irritability, anxiety and depression by reducing the blood flow to our brain by 40%. Yeah, and most medications have side effects and they make us acidic. And we should be maybe looking at other natural remedies like charcoal. Internal uses are there for poisoning, flatulence, nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. And if we take it, we should take it between meals 
And if you take medications, it should be at least two hours after medications. There are external uses to it too, for inflammation and swelling, eye and ear infections, injuries, insect bites, spider bites and snake bites. And some people have tried it even after the vaccination. And that, of course, in the form of a poultice. Well, Christ also applied clay. That's also one natural remedy. But he wants to help us in general. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is the great physician. We look, should look at him at this time. And he's planning to make a new start with us very soon when he invites us through the pearly gates, I hope, of the new Jerusalem. As the health reform is the right arm of the gospel, I believe that we make, have to make this progressive step to the original diet before sin to experience the benefits ourselves and then to hand it on to other people around us who are suffering. May God bless you as you study the original diet more in order to be a witness to people around you. If you like more challenging thoughts, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. May God bless you.